While I do not think the new Hammond is a bad character at all, he is quite different from the original Hammond. Both Hammonds have pros and cons to their characters, but when comparing the two, it does seem that people on the internet at least prefer the original Hammond to the new one. I don't think it's a case of people just picking the original Hammond because he's the original, but they are different characters in a lot of aspects. So before I give you my opinion, let's compare the two. Visually, the two Hammonds do look a bit different. The original Hammond looks to be of an older age. You can see hard lines on his face. Gives him the appearance of someone that has seen some shit. He's been through some shit. It also adds to his commanding nature. It's like some old alpha male type shit going on. And not only is he the guy in charge here, but he looks like it too. New Hammond looks quite younger to me compared to the old Hammond. You could say he almost has like a baby face going on. At least compared to the uh, original Hammond. However, I think New Hammond's appearance fits with his new personality, so it's not really an issue, just an observation. And both Hammonds are in uh, tip-top shape, but New Hammond is a bit taller and a bit more muscular. So visually, they are a bit different, but the changes aren't that drastic as uh, some of the other characters. However, the Hammond's personalities are quite different. And actually there are some pretty big changes made in the opening sequence that really changes the way the player views Hammond's character. So let's take a look at that first. First the original Hammond. From the start of the game he is clearly the guy in charge. Not just in the sense of like a job title like Hammond's my boss but in the sense of like he is running this operation. He has knowledge, experience, and expertise. This is shown early to the player when he corrects Kendra when she doesn't say the correct name of the Ishimura. So that's Ishimura. Impressive. The USG Ishimura. Biggest planet cracker in her class. You're gonna need to boost the signal if her power's low. Yes, we know. Boost the signal. But when shit hits the fan, it is Hammond that saves the crew. That guidance tether is damaged. Switch to manual, now. Inside the magnetic field? Are you insane? Abort! No! We can make it inside. Corporal, gave you an order. The field's too strong! Is everyone okay? I just saved our asses, Miss Daniels. If we had aborted at that speed and distance, we'd have smashed right into the side of the Ishimura. Now settle down, let's get to work. Cor you know, you got Kendra yelling to abort the landing procedure, which, yeah, I think anyone would have thought the same thing. I mean, the pilot nearly does this as he's yelling about the magnetic field being too strong, but Hammond straight up takes command of the situation, gives the order to not abort, and to continue landing. And when the original Hammond gives an order, you better fucking listen. Alright, we've still got a job to do. We're moving out. Which, after the rough landing, Kendra starts yelling at Hammond, and on first playthrough, I think most players are thinking the same thing Kendra is, you know? It's a horror game, and now this guy just gave the order to crash their ship. Why the fuck would he do this? Now we're gonna be stranded here, but original Hammond quickly counters Kendra's outburst by telling her if they had boarded at those speeds, they would have crashed right into the side of the Ishimura, and everyone would be dead. And then to end the sequence, after everyone just almost died, he's all like, okay, let's go people, we have a job to do. To him, this is just another day on the job. He's hard as a motherfucker. Literally, Ham is in his name. Now let's look at the opening sequence from the remake. While New Hammond is the one in charge, he doesn't have as much of a presence as the old Hammond. He seems a little green, and on my recent survey, one commenter replied that the new Hammond seemed too innocent, and I agree with that. Which, it, it isn't a bad trait at all, but in a situation where necromorphs are trying to rip you apart, it surely is not a positive. Now, the whole intro sequence plays out in a similar fashion to the original, but Hammond's character doesn't really give examples of being knowledgeable or being experienced. Kendra makes a slight joke about him by saying anything is better than listening to Hammond cite security protocols. Months apart with only vid calls. It's rough. Easy to say the wrong thing. 
I don't blame you. I'd listen to my girlfriend over Hammond reciting security protocols. Forewarned is forearmed, Miss Daniels. So you keep saying... I don't think she would really get away with that attitude if it was the old Hammond. I'm not sure old Hammond would even recite security protocols for no reason. I don't think he would really need to because he already knows them all. He's called out by Kendra for digging through her files, which she retorts is just standard background check. Maybe it was a standard check, maybe it wasn't. Either way, she caught him, and he's uh, taken by surprise. Just be careful on the approach. I'm not taking any chances with the CEC's pride and joy. No chances, huh? Is that why you were digging into my personnel files before we left? You track your file access? I'm a computer analyst. It comes with a job. I ran standard CEC background checks, Ms. Daniels. If you want to work in the big leagues, you have to play ball. The crash sequence is a bit different and doesn't have Kendra yelling to abort, nor does it have Hammond ordering the pilot to land the craft. During the crash sequence, it is the player's character, Isaac, that suggests to steer towards an emergency landing beacon, which ends up saving everyone, which is good to show how Isaac can think fast under pressure and shows he's well-versed on the Ishimura. He mentions he, uh... It's like, glad I looked over the ship's manual or some shit. So we know he's a smart guy. So I can see why they wanted to change this part to like highlight the main character. However, it does change the way how the player sees Hammond very early on, as he hasn't really made any sort of impact yet. Once inside the terminal, old Hammond seems confused and a little pissed that no one is inside. You know, it's the fact that standard procedure isn't being followed, so he's a little annoyed. Seems like everyone was trying to pack in a hurry. There should be a security detail in here. Yeah? Well, there's not. There's nobody here. I can't pick up any broadcasts. When that security console's still live, Isaac, log in and see what you can find. Kendra, get that elevator back online. Power's dead. I can't. Then we root the damn power. And when he tells Kendra to open the door and she gives him another snobby remark, he snaps at her. Well, we rock the damn power. God, this little scene is great. You can see it in Hammond's face before he yells at her. He just knows Kendra is going to start bitching. And you can just tell he can't take it anymore. That elevator back online. Power's dead. I can't. Then we root the damn power. And most players at this point are kind of, kind of on the side of Kendra where they're like, Come on, Hammond, can't you see something's not right here? Something's going on? But Hammond isn't here to complain. He's here to get shit done. Another interesting point here is once you've played the game and you know Kendra's undercover and she's been trying to slowly create discord from the start, I'm sure that reaction from Hammond was really what she wanted. I'm sure Hammond knows she should be able to get the door open. Hell, it's probably something basic for someone with her job title, which is why he ultimately yelled at her. And him losing his temper for just that one second really makes his character seem more human and relatable. But yet, at the same time, he never really loses his cool. He quickly regains his composure, he has control over himself, he tells the group to just all cooperate. If anything, the situation reaffirms his command of the group. And right after that, when he tells you to go to the computer display, it's like, uh, okay, yes sir, right away sir. Like, you, you fucking listen to what he says, right? Uh, but in the remake, when you enter the terminal area on the remake, everything plays out in a similar fashion, but it lacks the back and forth between Kendra and Hammond. Nothing really notable happens. There's nothing logged. No duty roster, no power to the elevator. For God's sake. That security console is still working. Isaac, get a damage report. I'm done playing around. When the player makes his way to the tram area, he once again stumbles into Hammond and Kendra, and I really like the way this scene plays out. Isaac! Isaac! God, I can't believe you made it. Isaac. <laughs> we ran to more of them on the way over here. Are you okay? More what? What the hell are those things? Is that the crew? Keep your voice down. Whatever they are, they're not friendly, and half the doors on this ship are locked because of the quarantine. Now we have to get to the bridge, but first, we gotta repair the tram system. You're crazy, Hammond. You're gonna get us all killed. If you listen to me, I will get you out of here alive. Now what's wrong with the tram? The 
data board is fried, but there should be a spare in the maintenance bay. There's also a broken tram blocking the tunnel that needs to be repaired. Damn it! Everything is on the other side of this quarantine. We can't reach it from here. No, we can't. But you can. Isaac, if I can get to the bridge, I should be able to access the personnel files. You fix the tram, and I'll help you find Nicole. You know, Hammond could have easily crumbled under all this pressure with this new extremely deadly situation they've all found themselves in. Instead, his confidence is what comes through the most. And Kendra starts yelling about something, we're all gonna die, whatever, and he tells her to lower her voice because, you know, there's fucking deadly creatures lurking. Uh, he's thinking clearly. Then the most confident voice he tells her, if you listen to me, I will get you out of here live. What a badass. And it really is said in a way where you truly want to believe him. And, I don't know, I really love this last bit here. You fix the tram, and I'll help you find Nicole. This is really cool. By telling Isaac just straight away, if he fixes the tram, he will help Isaac find Nicole. Because in this situation, no doubt everyone is in, like, survival mode. And, uh, in order to survive, Hammond must reach the bridge. And he knows why Isaac even took this mission in the first place, which is because Isaac wanted to visit his wife, Nicole. And now they've been attacked by these necromorphs, Hammond knows what Isaac is thinking. Isaac is, of course, thinking about Nicole and if she is okay and where the fuck is she. So with just this one sentence, Hammond is helping himself and he's helping Isaac. He doesn't try to beat around the bush, just straight to the point, I'll help you find Nicole. You know, he's a very smart guy. In the remake, this scenario plays out in a similar fashion once again, but now Isaac joins in on the conversation as well. <laughs> Isaac! Oh my god, Isaac! You made it! Just... They're everywhere. Jen, is he, uh... He's... gone. Nothing I can do. What the fuck are these things? The ones I saw? Some of them were wearing Ishimura uniforms. They're the crew? How the hell can they be the crew? Look at them. We need to get to the bridge. There's a thousand people on board. Someone will be there. We can't. The tram system's wrecked. Everything's locked down because of the quarantine. And you're both repair techs. So how do we do this? There's a broken tram car blocking the tunnel. It's gridlocked the system. And the data board's burned out. I can't lift the lockdown or call the tram until we get a spare from the maintenance bay. But it's all on Isaac's side of the quarantine. I'll handle it. Just make sure there's power to the repair systems. And Isaac? Yeah? I'm sure Nicole's okay. She's a doctor, right? She'll do the smart thing. Yeah. Yeah, she always does. Find somewhere safe. I'll be back soon. And I like when Hammond calls Kendra out here, saying, well, you're both repair techs. I'm not sure if Kendra is actually a repair tech, that she was then hired to go undercover by EarthGov, or if she worked at EarthGov already and is just some sort of genius that is pretending to be a repair tech. But either way, I wonder if she kind of slipped up here and Hammond's like, what the hell's going on, and calls her out on it. Whether or not this whole scenario is better or worse than the original, it's not really my point, but simply Hammond's character here is just way more direct and to the point in the original game. He's a man with a plan, and you just can't help but feel like you trust him in the original game. While in the remake, he's just kind of there. I mean, he does make the good point of, so fix it, but I don't know. It's just not as, uh, doesn't feel as good to me. But, uh, one other thing to point out here is in the original, it's Hammond that calls you on the video call. So he takes up most of the space in the camera. But in the remake, it's Kendra that calls you. So she seems bigger as she is closer to the camera. And while it's a small detail, I think it does make Hammond seem not as uh, imposing or in charge or boss-like. Maybe even makes him seem like less confident as it's Kendra who's up front and takes the initiative with the call. And in the sense of space, Kendra here is bigger than Hammond. Because in the call screen, she is bigger. This was obviously done on purpose by the developers as they changed this around on purpose. I mean, maybe as a way to make Kendra seem more trustworthy for those that didn't know the game or hadn't played the game yet and didn't know she was undercover. I'm really not sure why else they would swap them around. However, swapping them around here doesn't really do Hammond's character any favors. 
So once the player goes off and fixes the tram and comes back, this scenario plays out where Hammond continues to go boss mode on Kendra's ass. All right, we're on board and heading to the bridge. Good work. Strange. The quarantine just lifted. Whatever was in the flight lounge must have left. That's lucky for us. Isaac, get back to the Kellyon and prep it for launch. We'll find out what we can from the bridge and meet you there. If we live that long... You're out of your league, Hammond. This is suicide. We're going the to die out here. The lack of confidence in me is to be noted, Miss Daniels. But I have a mission to complete, and that's exactly what I am going to do, with or without you. Do we understand each other? Just get us out of here alive. Shrugging off her concerns by saying her lack of confidence is duly noted. He doesn't say that Kendra will make it. Only if she wants to live, then do what he says. It's like he doesn't care, really, what she thinks about him. But uh, in the remake, I think this section is one where, to me, New Hammond really kind of falls flat. We're on board. Something hit the roof, but it seems operational. Quarantine lockdown is lifted, so you can get to the hangar. Comms are still down, though, so be ready for anything. What's the plan? You and Johnson fix up the Kelly. We report to the bridge. Standard emergency protocol. What? Protocol? Hammond, people are dying here. And I'm not losing anyone else. We stick to procedure. We'll get through this. We'll see. The way he says, stick to procedure and I'm not losing anyone else is just kind of meh. He doesn't sound like super confident. I mean, maybe he actually believes what he's saying, but it almost sounds like he has no fucking clue what's going on. While Old Hammond was just on top of it. Also, he says, I'm not losing anyone else. Then Johnston dies back at the Kelly Inn about two minutes later, so yeah. And then, you know, a short while later, he actually tells Isaac, like, the exact same thing. I'm not losing anyone else, and it's... Still holding this position. What's happening there? I found some hydrazine that should work on the barricade. I'm heading back there now. Be careful with that hydrazine. I'm not losing anyone else. Like, okay, man, well, you already said that once right before Johnston died. And so it's like, while he has good intentions, and New Hammond seems like a really good person, I mean, this is not really a time for good intentions. This is a time to get your shit together. In the medical lab, OG Hammond's video call is okay. Nothing special. Isaac, are you there? We were attacked. Kendra's gone. One minute she was there, and I, I can't believe I lost her. We can still do this. Get me the captain's rig codes and we'll find Nicole. Looks like the crew barricaded the door to the emergency wing. We have to blow through it to get to the morgue. Get some thermite from medical storage and a shock pad from zero G therapy. Should be down the corridor. Communication is useless in all this static. Here, I think the remake Hammond was a lot better than the original. She ran the other way. No, nothing. Medical's a slaughterhouse. They barricaded access to the morgue. The morgue? Yeah. But the barricade was put together in a hurry. A hydrazine tank might blow it open. Just need a detonator, like maybe a shock pad. Nicole could be through there if... Isaac. The one who attacked us. I swear to God it was Chen. But... I saw him die. If they barricaded the morgue, maybe it was to keep something in. I think his comment here about the morgue keeping something in plays on his new character pretty good. It makes him seem like really clever, and it adds to the tension of the overall horror experience. Later on in the game, the player goes to the bridge to meet up with Hammond, and uh, at the end of their discussion, Hammond says this. By the way, Isaac, be careful. I saw something out there. I don't know what. I only got a glimpse. It was big. Really big. And I really like this line. It's ominous and foreboding, and it kind of makes you think, like, fuck, what's out there? 
And in the remake, it's really similar, but I don't know, it just doesn't carry the same weight with it. And Isaac? I heard something up there. Something big. Watch your back. I don't know, by now I think it's clear, character-wise, what kind of person OG Hammond is. He's kind of the guy you probably wouldn't want for a boss at your office job. You know, he's probably not too fun at parties. Probably wakes up at 4 a.m., hops up immediately, and proceeds to make his bed. But in this situation, he's the one kind of guy you would want as an ally. This is why I think fans of Dead Space tend to prefer the original Hammond. He's reliable and steady. New Hammond just seems at times oblivious to the reality of the situation and doesn't really have the same presence about him as the original Hammond. Now, New Hammond probably would be a lot more fun to party with or whatever, but he's not as reliable as the original. I think the writers probably didn't want Hammond to seem as one-dimensional as he is in the original game, but at the same time, it's that aspect about the original Hammond that lets the player really just get a feel for what kind of guy he is immediately. Also in the remake, they try to add in this whole Hammond and Chin storyline. You can double back and cut through maintenance. Find the captain's body and get his rig. With his codes, we... What was that? Chen? His face. I'm not seeing things, right? That's Chen. You can't help him, Hammond. He's... You're right. I should... the hell with it. Isaac, you hearing this? It's Chen. There, on the ring link. Did I lock him in alive? Chen's dead. You know that. I know my own fucking corporal. Chen, come in. Biohazard detected. Lockdown initiated. Another malfunction. Athia Shimura's in the red. Someone get the door open. <laughs> Chen? Christ, what did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kelly. Shoot him. It's not Chen. Shoot him! What? And while there were cool things about it, I don't think it really added anything to Hammond's overall character, and I don't know, to me it felt really cliche. Like I know in Dead Space, it's a common thing for people being affected by the marker to hallucinate and see people that aren't there, or see people that are necromorphs and not realize it, but the way it's presented here almost makes it seem like a classic zombie cliche, you know, where someone is obviously turning into a zombie after being bit, and some character just refuses to acknowledge it. And that's just what it felt like to me. I know it's not the same thing, but it really did kind of feel like that. And, uh, oh, on a side note, imagine if all the slashers looked as detailed as Slasher Chin does. It would have been wicked. This is kind of what I expected all the slashers to look like, to be honest. But, uh, anyway, I think both Hammonds do work. And if you prefer the new Hammond over the original, there's nothing wrong with that. I myself prefer the original. And you know, he was a little bit one-dimensional, but it also lets the player just immediately pick up on who he is and what he's about. He's a hard-ass, and experienced, and he doesn't give up. And while New Hammond doesn't give up either, it doesn't feel like he has what it takes. He also gets tricked by the marker pretty easily, but at the end, at least he went out like a badass. So who do you prefer, the OG Hammond or New Hammond? As always, this has been David with Consternation Evolved. Thanks for watching.